Today was the first day of school in Seattle. Well, kind of. Nearly 50,000 students, they had to stay home from school because of a teacher's union strike. Huh. In California, where they're experiencing a record heat wave, many classrooms, they don't have AC. School has had to close early. Hot weather, not a surprise in California. All this COVID relief fund money lying around and you couldn't put some air conditioning in a few of the classrooms. Now they're spending it on nonsense, mostly. I wonder a new Gallup poll shows satisfaction with U.S. education is dropping faster than your 401k. Only 42% of Americans say they are completely satisfied or somewhat satisfied with K-12 education in the country, compared to 51% in 2019. Look what the pandemic did. It created an entire nation of skeptical parents. So when can the teachers union stop standing in the way of our kids' education? Let's meet tonight's magnificent man panel. We've got co-founder of Based Politics and Foundation for Economic Education Policy, where he serves as a correspondent. Brad Palumbo is here, yeah. Host of the Aggressive Progressive Podcast, former aide to Senator Chuck Schumer, Chris Hahn. He's asking for it. And 2020 Libertarian Vice Presidential Candidate, chair of youarethepower.net. Look at that bald eagle. And there's a bird on the flag. It's Spike Cohen. Uh, wonderful. Wow. Yeah, okay. that's okay. right. Yeah. Uh, it's wonderful to have you all. What so, are you talking about? Nothing yet. We'll get to you, <laughs> Hotshot. Um, so, okay. Brad, I want to start with you. You know, I think Betsy DeVos actually made a really good point. Kids were the ultimate victims of the pandemic, and here they are still being punished, you know, all across California, all the way up to Seattle and beyond. Are you surprised that uh, erosion in public school trust has occurred to this degree. No, I wish I could say that I was surprised, but after the last few years and the extent to which schools were closed, despite mountains of evidence that it was safe to reopen, European countries did far sooner, and the enormous harm that that had, and we're still doing this in some places, is just mind-boggling to me. But I wish I could say I was surprised that people aren't happy with the education that they're getting, but unfortunately, you know, I'm familiar with Econ 101, and when you have a monopoly on something, which in many parts of the country, there's a monopoly on education through public schools, it's really the only option in places with no school choice, well, they don't have to provide you with very good services. Imagine if you had a grocery store and, and there was only one in your state or, or in your area that you could go to. Yeah. You, guess what? You're going to buy whatever they feel like giving you at whatever price they feel like giving it to you. That's basically the status quo of our school system. And so we need to bring in choice and market competition into this if we want people to actually have education that will satisfy them for their kids, which is pretty darn important. You know, the, you you make a, a great point because what would you rather have? You know, would you rather have a dollar store or would you like to have a Trader Joe's, a Whole Foods, and a Kroger within your reach so you could make all of those decisions? And you know, Chris, to Brad's point, like there are food deserts in this country, there are also educational deserts, and in in places like Seattle where. Families want to get back to work. Kids have to make up for their learning loss. Uh, but, you know, these teachers unions think that they can continue this stranglehold. Don't they realize they have exhausted their goodwill? Well, look, unions have a right to strike and to negotiate their fair wages. And parents who are unhappy with their school, school board elections are every year in every part of the country. And they are a small election that you can knock on doors and win if you're really motivated by it. I read that poll. Uh, parents, for the most part, are satisfied with their schools. Most of the people who are unsatisfied don't have kids in school right now. So there's a lot of look. I'm not saying education in this country is perfect, but we made a decision in this country to provide a public education to every child in America. We should be giving them that. They should be in school full time all the time. I get that. Uh, and I get things can get better. Uh, but, uh, you know, this gloom and doom over our public education system, I think we have one of the finest public education systems in the world. Uh, it could be better. It will be better. Uh, Spike, I see you shaking your head. Do you disagree yeah, with that? Yeah, we have somewhere premise? around the. We have. We have something like the 25th or 30th best education system, despite the fact that uh, the United States spends uh, per student uh, more taxpayer money and more out-of-pocket money than almost any other country on Earth. Uh, the Federal Department of Education was created nearly 50 years ago. In that time, they have spent nearly $3 trillion. And every single metric that's used to measure, measure educational outcomes, graduation rates, GPA, literacy rates, worldwide ranking, we have continued to 
slide as a direct result of what Brad said. When government or anyone has a monopoly on something, in this case education, it gets worse and worse and worse. I think the answer is very clear. We need to get government out of education entirely. Government is rarely good at anything. This is not one of those examples of them being good at something. That starts with ending the Federal Department of Education, putting that money back in the hands of parents and having robust statewide uh, school choice programs that allow the parents to decide where their uh, students go. You'll notice that the teachers unions are very upset about this because they say it will defund the schools. Why? If the parents are happy with the schools, why would they take their money and their kids anywhere else? I think they know exactly why it'll defund the schools, because as soon as the parents have better options available with the money that was already stolen from them, they're going to use it. They're going to vote with their dollars and with their kids. And uh, and these these monopolies are going to go away. Yes, and guess what? Parents want their kids to learn. They don't want them to be uh, filthy little urchins roaming the streets, picking pockets. Uh, no, they, they want them in school, learning math, learning how to read and write, learning how to be logical, rational, functioning members of society. It, that does not require uh, the government, particularly the federal government, to oversee any of that. All right, man, panel, don't go.